All right, so welcome back to the Crypto ZX channel. You guys know what time it is. We're going to be talking about XRP. If you're enjoying these updates, smash that like button. But this right here is a very, very informative update, and I will share, of course, as to why uh, I'm saying that. But before we get into it, guys, let's take a look at what's happening with the broader market. You know, as far as you know, the broader market goes, we're still seeing quite a bit of green across the board. It's pretty much maintaining as of now, uh, which of course will take. Uh, but in terms of Bitcoin uh, sitting as where it's currently sitting at, not a time to be getting excited by any means as i've said but we'll take it one step at a time obviously we're going into monday morning a brand new week so it's going to be really interesting to see how the market reacts but before we get into it as always just a quick disclaimer anything on this channel is not financial advice always do your own due diligence and research when you are investing in crypto so xrp price trend sec appeal speculation so while the u.s presidential election will remain a focal point Uncertainty about the SEC plans to appeal against ruling in the Ripple case remains an XRP headwind. Last week, pro-crypto lawyer Fred raised the chances of SEC appeal, saying, in my opinion, 60-40 in a favor of appeal. So pretty much saying, that, you know, there's more chances that there is an appeal that happens, about 60% chance that it happens, and a 40% chance that it does not happen. Again, this has left a lot of investors on the sideline, as you know, um, in terms of excitement as of now. That's not obviously not being felt. And of course, external factors are not helping at all either. And of course, Bitcoin volatility goes pretty much unsaid is not helping. But let's switch to our main topic, which is this right here. really want to show you guys some big things Brad Curling has to say. So stablecoin launch by ripple is near of course and we know about this we spoke about this in my last update but let's see what brad curling house has to say we've always been kind of consistent we're going to do everything we can to launch this year everything ripple does is in conjunction with regulatory approval and licensing and so a key issue is that we will continue to make sure we are partner with the u.s regulators before we go live with the stablecoin and that is a massive statement coming out of Brad Gerlinghouse himself. He sees the opportunity for launching stablecoin globally, certainly in the Japan, due to favorable regulations, but confirmed that they plan to start it in the U.S. only, just awaiting green light from the regulator. So this is coming out from Brad Gerlinghouse himself. They want to get the regulatory clarity. We spoke about this in the yesterday's update. I said, after them going through this massive SEC lawsuit, do you really think they're not going to have this uh, green light from the regulators for the stablecoin before they launch it? And again, this kind of confirms you know, what we spoke about yesterday. And again, I would love to know your personal thoughts down below regarding this as well. So how are your LUSD is different from XRP in terms of use case? And this is a highly, highly requested question. So let's get into it. Brad Gerlinghouse said that the company has always used XRP, which is the native token, the digital asset native to Ripple Technologies as a bridge asset for cross-border. However, the primary rationale for entering the stablecoin market is it, well, worth $2.3 trillion in about five years. Available corridors around the globe and customers demand and we know now the likes of bricks the likes of bricks that are developing their own stable coin imagine the magnitude of it and i totally agree 2.3 trillion dollars so they really wanted to kind of get their hands in on it early on before it gets to that level and you can see given ripple's place in the payment infrastructure as well as trusted brand partnering with financial institutions and regulators we felt like there is an opportunity to enter the stablecoin market as the market continues to grow. Very, very interesting things. But this is where the things start getting a little bit spicy. United States, it's behind Japan, the UK and Switzerland. That's a big, big statement to make. But if you've been following the recent announcements in terms of crypto clarity, I kind of agree with Brad Gerlinghouse that, you know, Japan, UK, Switzerland are ahead of US. And this is what Donald Trump is saying that, you know, he wants to make US the crypto hub, not other countries. So pretty much how we can take this is you can see that these big, big uh, politicians, you know, these big players are starting to realize 
that crypto is here to stay. Hence, you're seeing uh, so many different institutional interests coming in, ETFs being introduced, which just a few years ago was just uh, a thought that what you know people in the traditional market would call crazy. But now look where we are. So Brad Gerlinghouse says United States is really behind Japan, the UK, and Switzerland. He also claimed that the regulatory clarity in Japan and enthusiasm in the government towards technology will always help bring more innovations to our country. So obviously he spoke about the SBI, um, you know, partnership since 2016. In addition, the partnership for increasing adoption of XRP and XRPL ledger in Japan. In the most recent development in stablecoin in Japan, three biggest Japanese banks, MUFG, SMBC, and Mizo plan to use the SWIFT link stablecoin system to facilitate cross-border payments that is known as the Project PAX. And last but not least, this is what Brad Gerlingas has had to say about the sad reality about the U.S. So he said, despite the sad reality, so I should go over this. So he said that the U.S. has been hostile towards crypto. You know, Biden administration has taken negative view and has impacted the crypto industry. The U.S. SEC has sued many companies with the regulation through enforcement approach rather than doing what other countries' regulators have done. But despite the sad reality, Gerlinghouse remained optimistic, adding that crypto will become a winner despite who wins the upcoming elections. He noted that the company had no plans on going public in the U.S. because of the regulatory stance on the SEC. So, what does this really mean? Does this mean that they're not going to go, uh, you know, public anymore? Or is that once they get a little bit of clarity for crypto, that's when, um, you know, they see that, you know, it's a good time to go public. So pretty much, I think what Greg Drilling House, I would love to know your personal thoughts down below regarding this, but pretty much what I can take away from this is that he's saying due to obviously the current stance on crypto, they are not feeling comfortable going public because, of course, so many different hurdles that you will have to pass. Um, maybe if a new government is or, you know, new rules, new policies are introduced revolving crypto, maybe then they decide that they'll go public. But a very, very interesting, uh, you know, information coming out of Brad Gerlinghouse himself. Let me know your personal thoughts down below regarding this. Do you think... Number one, Ripple will go public in the U.S. And number two, do you think that the regulators are going to uh, you know, be more open in using uh, the stablecoin and not only the stablecoin, making the U.S. you know, the hub of crypto? Let me know your thoughts down below regarding this. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for showing tremendous amount of love. We'll see you tomorrow. It's been CryptoZX and peace out.